I'm honored first to uh, welcome uh, Greg Rothman here. Greg is currently the elected representative of the 87th uh, Legislative District in Cumberland County. Uh, Greg uh, brings a strong business background to the General Assembly. As a small business owner, he knows uh, how out-of-control spending and higher taxes negatively impact the Commonwealth's employers and is committed to ensuring the state lives within its means while supporting core functions of government. Um, Greg started as a real estate agent with RSR Realtors and advanced to becoming the president and CEO. Greg was also a member of the Marine Corps, Marine Corps and served during Operation Desert Storm, uh, where he rose to the rank of Staff Sergeant before being honorably discharged in 2001. Um, Greg is a graduate of Cumberland Valley High School and holds an undergraduate degree in political science from the University of Massachusetts and a Master of Science uh, in real estate from John Hopkins. Um, he's formerly previously served as a trustee of the at the Harrisburg University of Science and Technology. Um, he was one of the founders of Harrisburg Young Professionals and uh, has a wonderful children and, and wife that are noted here in his bio as well. So um, at this time, I'd like to help, ask you to help me wel welcome up Representative Greg Rothman. Thank you, Eric. Let me make sure my mic's on. Can you, everyone hear me okay? Uh, so uh, this weekend's the last weekend to get your DOE license, and it reminded me of a story of um, uh, a physicist, an engineer, and a real estate appraiser. So I was a real estate broker, also a real estate appraiser, um, and have an MAI in, in appraising. Uh, went deer hunting, and uh, so they saw a big buck, and the physicist said, uh, let me try to figure this out, got out his pad, figured out the trajectory in a perfect, you have a perfect sphere in a vacuum shot, 10 feet short, the bullet lands. So the engineer says, I got this figured out. Pulls out their, their pad, a lot of engineers in this room. Uh, figures out the projectile assumptions, fires 10 feet past the buck. The appraiser says, we got him. Uh, when, when I went to the legislature, I thought, that every issue was sort of black and white, two sides. I had no idea how much balancing there is and how many, how many different positions on multi-dimensions uh, there are and issues. I mean, we take for granted uh, that things just run, right? And when I say we, the electorate, the 64,000 people that, that I, I represent in my district, which is Cumberland County, uh, but I also know the district because I've lived there all my life and, and ran a business there and, and grew up there and realized that uh, the, the one issue that we sort of all have in common uh, in my district is that I have all these roads running through it, 83, 81, 76, the Turnpike, 1115, we're a distribution center just as uh, uh, the Pennsylvania is a dis distribution center and um, decided that I would get involved in the transportation issues uh, as a way of dealing with two things. Congestion, which my constituents sit in traffic twice a day, and uh, also safety, because we have way too many um, traffic fatalities and accidents, uh, not just uh, on people driving, or people or, uh, as they travel, but also the workers, which I represent, uh, Hemp Brothers and Pensy Supply, are in my district. So how do we make our roads better? And, and what have we done, um, and, and, th and thank you, thank you, uh, Jack, for hosting us. Thank you, Gannett Fleming and Bob Scare, who are also in my district, for uh, being part of this group. And thank you all for being here. Uh, what, what have we done in everything else in, our, in society? We've used technology to make our lives better, safer, right, to improve our quality of life. We do it, we see it in medicine, we see it yeah, everywhere in our lives, we use technology to make our lives better. So how do we do that in transportation? And uh, so I got on the transportation committee. We have a, an outstanding chairman, John Taylor, who is retiring, but from Philadelphia, who um, uh, we were talking, talking on the way over, Leo and I were talking on the way over, is a gentleman and, and gets stuff done. And this committee in the House of Representatives is an, an exceptional committee. We had 260 pieces of legislation referred to the Transportation Committee last session. Of those, um, 97 pieces of legislation were passed out. 
Now, if you compare that to an average committee, an average committee gets about 20 to 25 bills and may pass 10. So the Transportation Committee is a, quite an active uh, committee. Uh, the chairman, the members of, the, of the, the committee, I'm one of the only freshmen and I think one of the few from central Pennsylvania uh, on the committee, they, they believe that transportation and the roads you drive on are a Republican or a Democratic issue. It's bipartisan. We work together. We work together with our colleagues in the Senate uh, and that we have to make transportation functional. And how does government, this is when we're talking about core functions of government, this is a core function. So our priority of the committee uh, is safety. Uh, that's one of, again, uh, the priority of this uh, department, the PennDOT, and Secretary Richards is doing an outstanding job. Uh, her policy, and she's been pushing the Toward Zero Death Initiative. Uh, we've, since they've started measuring tra traffic fatalities, I think last year was the best year ever in Pennsylvania as far as the limited number of deaths, but we still have close to 1,200 deaths a year um, on our roads in Pennsylvania. And, um, it, and you hear different statistics, but 94, 95, 99 percent of all traffic accidents, I don't know, the engineers in here would probably say 100 percent, is human error. And so how do we, how do we allow technology to, to, to help uh, eliminate some of that human error? Uh, and that uh, is, in my feeling, you help remove the operator. And so uh, there are some, some um, bills of the 100 so pieces of legislation that have come out of the House and some in the Senate uh, dealing with these types of, you know, the, the big package of safety. Uh, uh, Senate Bill 172, it's Senator Argyle's bill, uh, that allows for automated speed enforcement system as a pilot program uh, in both Roosevelt Vol and uh, on highways in the work zone safety areas. Uh, Max Hemp from Hemp Brothers, uh, I asked him, I've known him virtually all my life, I asked him one day, what can I do for you as your legislator? What's the most important thing? I'm thinking all kinds of, you know, regulatory reform or uh, you know, innovation or tax cuts or, you know, help me find more employees. It's bring my employees home, my workers home every night. And uh, we have way too many accidents. On a way over, we came through 283. I think 283 was averaging one per week um, in the work zones. I mean, the, the uh, you know, how do we get people to slow down? How do we get people not to be distracted? And uh, cameras make a difference. I mean, it, it just changes people's mentality when they, when they see. Uh, I went to a conference one time on uh, home security systems, and they figured out that you could cut down by 80 or 90 percent the likelihood of being burglarized by putting a sign in your yard or in your window that says security system. You don't even need the system, just the sign, because criminals are smart. Why are they going to go to a place that has a security system? So drivers, we put up signs that say, you know, work zone camera in this, this area, they slow down. We put up signs saying radar, speed enforced, they slow down. So how do, how do we get people to change this isn't about catching people, it's about changing the way they drive. Uh, so we're hoping that the House will it, it's, uh, we'll take up uh, Senate Bill 172 when we go back. We're only back in for five days in September and five days in October. Um, but that's, uh, that's, we're hopeful that, that that'll come out of the House and the governor will sign it. Uh, Rosemary Brown, one of my colleagues um, from Lehigh Valley, has House Bill 1684, which is um, distracted driving and uh, restricted use of of, of phones. Um, she also had a, a Greg Moreland's here, our, one of, from our staffers, and uh, she also had part of the bill about personal grooming devices. And uh, so I brought a toothpick to the committee meeting. Um, but you, you know, all you got to do is watch what people are doing when they're driving. And I have two teenage drivers, so um, you know, this is especially important to me. But our younger generation of drivers are don't have two hands at, you know, three and nine, and aren't, aren't paying attention the way we were brought up driving. And maybe it's because of technology, it's easier to drive. My 19-year-old, who's going to be a sophomore at NYU, which you would think would require some degree of basic intelligence to get into NYU, said to me, well, I wasn't feeling well driving home from New York, so I was kind of getting tired, so I put on cruise control. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so the, the, um, 
the next bill is uh, uh, the Senate Bill 251, which, I mean, I, there's things, that I, I know a lot about real estate, I know a little bit about baseball, all these things I'm learning about. I had no idea that in the state of Pennsylvania, municipal police couldn't use radar. They can use NRAD, they can use stopwatches. They had me out on the highway flicking the switch trying to figure out those lines that are painted, you know, how fast a car's going. They can't use radar. And I asked a dumb question, which I'm good at doing. Why, don't, why can't local police use radar? And uh, I found five or six objections to why the legislature wouldn't allow radar. And one had to do with revenue, that they didn't want people, local municipalities using this to uh, augment their budgets. Uh, some had to do with the, my colleagues told me on the, on the House Committee, they said, so when the ticket's issued, it's going to say the Rothman radar ticket. Nobody likes getting tickets. Why do you want to, why do you want to make it easier to get tickets? But so um, two, uh, 251, Senate bill was Senator Volkovich. Um, Blakovich is bill. Um, we took that in the House and we amended it with my bill and sent it back to the Senate, uh, which will allow for local municipalities to use radar. And again, we're trying to change people's behavior. Uh, and the bill includes that uh, it's a pilot program for six years. It cannot be used for revenue enhancement. Uh, it can't, you have to be marked vehicles. They have to post that their local radar is in force. Uh, and again, it's about uh, changing people's behavior, not, not punishing people. Uh, and then uh, the reason we're here today, I was out in, uh, um, in California at Stanford at the Center for uh, Automotive um, Research, Car Center, uh, met, met a group of people from Zeusk who gave a presentation about how um, millennials don't want to have cars. Uh, in California, it's unbelievable. I mean, they have these things called birds that are scooter, motorized scooters, and they're all over the place in Santa Monica where my son lives. And, you know, the millennials understand if you live in San Francisco or you live in the Bay Area, you know, that the cost of having a car. Um, I, I just started shopping for, I have a mattress at 17 years old, and my wife said, we need a new mattress. So, you know, what, what item do you have in your life that you use more than your mattress? So mattresses are expensive, but when you figure out that you use them for eight hours a day, you know, that's, that's a pretty good use. What percentage do you use your car? Anybody know? I mean, you think about it, I, I, I tell people 4%, they don't believe me, and then they start doing the math. I mean, the actual time you're in your car a day is maybe an hour, maybe two. I mean, so between four and 10% of the day, and think about what it costs. So um, how do we use ride sharing? How do we uh, use autonomous vehicle technology? How do we, um, how do we make, uh, you know, adapt for the future in, in uh, in autonomous vehicles. So I went to Chairman Taylor and told him about my interests, and he said, great, you're the chairman of the subcommittee on autonomous vehicles. Um, so we started to look, with, and, and, and PennDOT had already been way ahead of us on, on uh, the work they've been doing. The Senate had been working on it. Uh, the state police, the insurance groups, uh, all had uh, interest in, in um, this technology and the different, different stages, which you'll learn about more today, and you'll hear more about today. But so. Um, I, I introduced a bill in 1958, which sort of combined the two parts. Autonomous vehicle technology in attenuators at the back of work zone safety, in snow plows, in lawn, um, the, the, the people who cut the medians. Um, how do we get that technology um, to be allowed in, in work zone safety? And then the second part of it was to allow um, which the, there's a Royal Truckings here. I saw they, they, they do, they have that equipment. Um, but also, you know, how do we protect the work zone by not having a driver? Apparently, you're in that last truck, which is really the first vehicle that you come to when you crash into a work zone safety. There has to be someone in that vehicle. So imagine going to work that day and saying, well, you get the short straw. You're going to be in the vehicle that's going to get hit once a week. Uh, so the, this, this bill will allow autonomous technology in that vehicle. And then also um, the concept of the, the, the Peloton or the, um, you know, with the, with the trucking where you can have three trucks going together um, and working together, which saves on uh, saw pollution and, and efficiency, just like the Tour de France, you know, where you get the bikes drafting this, the same concept. Uh, I'll tell you, it was, a, it was a new issue in the House, in our committee. There was a lot of 
discussion, a lot of debate. Um, I mean, I had to explain to everybody who had flown a plane that you probably had it, were on autopilot most of the time you were in the plane, including the takeoff and landing. Uh, we, it was bipartisan. We, we, we went through the bill, worked with um, all, all sides and all issues, the rural legislators, uh, the, the urban legislators, and uh, in an unprecedented, um, I've only been there three years, but um, the bill passed 191 to nothing. Not a single negative vote in our, in our bill. And it's sent to the Senate, and we're hoping that the Senate will take it up soon and the governor will sign it. Uh, on July 23rd, uh, the uh, PennDOT uh, produced the Autonomous Vehicle Testing Guidelines, and I know staff is currently holding meetings. You'll hear more about that when Leo, when Leo talks. And we also have House Bill 2300, uh, sponsored by a colleague of mine, Jim Marshall, who's been on the forefront of the autonomous vehicle for personal use, uh, and as well as um, coming up with shuttles for uh, if you drive through Philadelphia, fly through Philadelphia Airport, you're probably taking one of the shuttles that connects the, uh, the, the airport. College campuses could use it. Penn State Harrisburg, just down the street from here, is interested. You know, how do we use the, um, the autonomous technology uh, in, um, uh, you know, in that type of um, situation where we're moving people, which is obviously Gannett Fleming has quite an interest. And I'll, I'll just end with a story. Um, I spent 10 years in the Marine Corps, and I, we were in artillery, so we had an expression about trucks. Uh, but we were always in trucks. And I was in a Humvee. I was in the passenger seat. There was a driver. It was late at night. We were on a convoy. We had night, uh, uh, light discipline. Sherry was a Marine, too. So all you had was one little light on the back of the vehicle in front of you and one little light on the vehicle in front of you. Total uh, light discipline. And um, we were stopped, which wasn't unusual. We stopped. And, but we have been stopped for a long time. So I decided, I told the driver, I'm going to get out and find out what's going on. I go up to the vehicle in front of me. Hey, what's going on up here? He said, I don't know. Car Trucks in front of me stop. Okay, go to the next one. About five vehicles up, the guy was asleep, and so was his passenger. And uh, so we, we had to hustle to catch up to the rest of our group. I hadn't been looking behind us. But, you know, we could use, the military could use this. They're already, um, and uh, they're, they're, they're asking for it too. So um, there's great opportunities in the future. I'm glad you're all here. And